Are we finally getting close to unraveling the mystery? The mystery of how one of the world's most important penetrations of the underworld elite got burned? How the operators of a sophisticated and secret criminal communication system found out that police had infiltrated their servers, allowing cops to sit in on each hit being ordered, arms deal being made, and drug shipment being planned. Many of you will have heard about EncroChat by now. It's the encrypted, seemingly impenetrable phone system allowing serious criminals to talk and text in private, and how an international law enforcement consortium managed to unscramble it all through an ingenious hack. That hack allowed police in several countries to secretly live monitor and record millions of text messages, emails, GPS locations, and phone calls from tens of thousands of users until someone or something revealed the investigation. How did that closely guarded secret get out? The mob reporter here with the story of how police broke the code of messages being sent between serious organized crime groups and of a new development that may shed light on how one of the most cherished police ops got burned by one of their own. Let me tell you about it. The rise and fall of EncroChat is one of the most significant developments in international crime in years. EncroChat was a complete end-to-end -end encrypted phone service allowing private communication. They had customized handsets with no camera, microphone or GPS for greater privacy. Everything going into the phone and everything coming out of it was encrypted and, the manufacturer believed, completely anonymous, secure and untraceable. It was a safe space for dirty deeds. This here is some of their online marketing. The phones had a panic wipe feature, which is a digital self-destruct code that could be entered to erase all its data. Customers could wipe it clean themselves if they had time. But if the phone was seized by police, they could give the officer the wipe code when they were asked for the entry pass code and if the cop tapped in the numbers, it would wipe the whole thing clean. Devious. The devices were a replacement for the encrypted BlackBerry phones many gangsters had used until it was revealed that Canadian police had master encryption keys to decode BlackBerry private messages. The RCMP used this to track the Mafia in Montreal during the Rizzuto clan's feud. And it helped solve the murder of Sal Montagna the acting boss of New York's Bonanno crime family, who was hit by Montreal gangsters when he was living in Canada in 2011. The EncroChat handsets, which the company called Carbon Units, started popping up in the hands of criminals across Europe in late 2015, and they were used by hitmen, drug traffickers, mobsters, crooks, and serious gangsters of all descriptions. Because messages were encrypted directly on the device before being sent, police couldn't just tap them and listen in, or intercept the messages and read them, like they do with normal phone and computer communications. EncroChat became popular with criminals who could afford them. French police, however, managed to place a hacking tool into the servers that EncroChat used a collaboration of French and Dutch investigators that later included British police began a highly secretive operation of live monitoring millions of messages, images and passcodes. It unlocked a door to a vast criminal underworld. It was like having a police agent secretly sitting at the table as deals were negotiated, planned and executed. They saw photos of the products being offered, bought, moved and sold and the money used to do it. Images you see here are from various EncroChat probes. Hacking in was a modern milestone event in fighting the modern face of crime. But then someone with the company somehow found out they'd been compromised. And on June 12, 2020, an anonymous emergency alert was pushed out to users. June 12, 2020. Remember that date for a moment. The alert says, quote, they repurposed our domain to launch an attack to compromise the carbon units. We can no longer guarantee the security of your device. 
Then the message warned users to power off and physically dispose of their device immediately. With that, police in several countries moved in on some of their highest value targets. Tons of cocaine, meth, and pot were seized. Drug labs raided. Weapons found. Hundreds of suspects arrested and millions of euros in cash and assets were seized. An underworld torture chamber was even discovered in the Netherlands, built from seven shipping containers. French police said 90% of EncroChat's French subscribers were criminals, while British police said they found no evidence of non-criminal use. Police have been picking off EncroChat users ever since, triaging the information at hand and trying to catch up with all of the data. In the UK, the fruits of the EncroChat hack are still reaching deep into the underworld in an ongoing project called Operation Venetic. It's led by the National Crime Agency. The NCA say the data helped them pick off kingpins and, quote, the so-called iconic untouchables who have evaded law enforcement for years, unquote. Arrests in Operation Venetic are announced regularly now. As of March, there had been 1,550 arrests, with tons of drugs and the equivalent of almost 80 million US dollars worth of criminal cash seized. Like these ones from last week of a London drug gang, including a mom and son duo. They used EncroChat to plot how to circumvent the strict pandemic lockdown restrictions to move their dope around the city of London. On EncroChat, the ringleader, West London's Andrew Doyle, used the alias Neighborhood Hero during the peak of the COVID restrictions when police were doing check stops to ensure public compliance. Doyle sent a warning to his gang, quote, driving through London, old Bill or everywhere, pulling people, unquote. Old Bill is part of England's rich underworld slang. It's a term for police officers. Doyle discussed solutions over EncroChat, asking them to disguise themselves and their vans as construction workers who are allowed to keep working as essential workers. But throughout all of these exploits, the original leak that tipped EncroChat off to the police hack remains something of a mystery. But we may now have a clue about that. Last Friday evening, which is precisely when news is often released by authorities not wanting it to get a lot of notice, the National Crime Agency in Britain announced that a police employee had been charged with unauthorized access to computer material and perverting the course of justice. Police said Natalie Maltram, 22, was working as an intelligence analyst with the Northwest Regional Organized Crime Unit. She was arrested with two others, Jonathan Kay and Leah Bennett, both 36 years old, who lived a mile down the road from Natalie Maltram in Warrington, a town between Liverpool and Manchester in England's north. Their crime, police allege, was disclosing the information that law enforcement could access encrypted EncroChat data. Now, although this was announced on May 21, 2021, she was actually arrested nearly a year earlier. You guessed it, on June 12, 2020. That's right, she was arrested for disclosing the information that law enforcement could access the EncroChat data on the very day that the alert went out to all the EncroChat users. Jonathan Kay, one of her co-accused, is also charged under the law that gives police the power to demand access to encrypted data. Apparently, he refused to demand for the password to access his phone, laptop, or any other electronic device. Since this was an Operation Venetic investigation, we might presume it was an EncroChat device that he allegedly refused to unlock. When Operation Venetic was first revealed by the NCA, it said the agency worked with the regional organized crime units for which Motrim was working. 
intelligence packages on the AncroChat project were disseminated to these crime units. She was clearly in a position to know. Could this be the leak that prompted the emergency alert to AncroChat customers? To be clear, to my viewers and to those facing unresolved charges, I'm not saying this is the case, but just that it seems like a distinct possibility. There are alternate possibilities as well. Strong contemporary reporting by Joseph Cox at Vice News offers an account from a purported AncroChat insider who said the company started getting tech support reports from customers complaining that the wipe feature wasn't working back in May 2020, and then in June discovered some malware in one of its devices. When the company's fix was completely defeated by the hack, the source told Vice, they issued the alert to users. That could explain the sudden warning. But the timing of the arrest of the police analyst who worked in a unit partnered on the AncroChat file and accused of spilling AncroChat secrets on the same day the warning was sent out is hard to ignore. I've asked the NCA about this and asked them to explain the date of the arrests and how it aligns with the date of the AncroChat leak. A senior NCA spokesman said because the case is before the courts, they won't be commenting until the case is resolved. I'll ask him again later. In any event, it will be years before we know the true damage that the law enforcement breach of AncroChat did to the criminal organizations. We might know the extent of the breach from the other side sooner than that. <laughs> Natalie Motram and her two co-accused are scheduled to appear in court on June 8th, just four days shy of a year after the date of her arrest. And of course, also four days shy of when AncroChat users were tipped off that they'd all been burned. Maybe then we'll have some answers. Thanks for watching.